Okay, I think we can begin. I hope everybody's hearing me well. So, good morning and welcome to all. Thank you for attending our Biogas Action webinar uh, entitled The Use of Biomethane in the Transition to a Clean Transport. My name is Philippe Dumitriou. I'm a project officer at Federen and I'll be your moderator this morning. This webinar will indeed tackle the utilization of biomethane in the transport sector. We will be approaching the topic from two different angles. Um, the European Commission will highlight the current EU policies in support of the transition to a cleaner mobility and will also present the prospects, um, the prospects uh, opened by recent uh, legislative initiatives, notably in regards to the use of biomethane in transport. Secondly, we'll have some projects and policies uh, presented by two regional energy agencies, which will highlight the benefits and drivers of the use of biomethane in transport. Our three speakers are already online, from what I see. Um, so, from the European Commission, Director General for Mobility and Transport, uh, we have Mr. Antonio Tricas. Valérie Boroni is also with us from the Regional Energy, Energy Agency of Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes and Hannele Johansson uh, from the Regional Energy Agency for Southeast Sweden. During each presentation, um, actually after each presentation, there will be a Q&A session, okay? So may, you may ask your questions in writing in the chat box on your right down, okay? And even during the presentations, if you have questions, I'll record them and I'll ask them when the Q&A session starts. Before proceeding to the, our first presentation, just a few words about the Biogas Action Project in the frame of which this webinar is organized. It is a Horizon 20 funded project focusing on the removal of non-technical barriers to the widespread production of bio, biogas from manure and other waste. Um, the project is based on a deeper cooperation between different policy levels, European, national, regional, and on its implementation in various EU regions. Um, indeed, the, um, the actions on the ground are happening in nine target regions, as you can see here, and the partners have, uh, let's say, five types of strategic actions. Uh, one of the first type of action is the ones tackling institutional building, which uh, basic, basically means mobilizing stakeholders and strengthening the cooperation between the biogas actors in order to give the sector more momentum. Secondly, um, strengthening the biogas act sector framework will aim at defining and influencing ways to provide a better framework for the biogas sector in each target country region. Um, there's also, there are also actions uh, aiming at optimizing business models and financing of biogas projects. Partners try to boost opportunities for bringing relevant and new business distribution models into play. Um, optimizing biogas production as well is being done through capacity building and building of competencies at both biogas sector managerial and staff level. Um, and this aims, of course, at optimizing the biogas production. And last but not least, uh, partners are providing assistance to specific high-quality biogas project development, uh, which uh, means that they're trying to exploit specific opportunities for new biogas production or to improve existing ones. The partners, uh, we have also developed a series of tools that are available online, so I'll invite you to explore them on our website. And starting with 2018, we've, we will also start peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning activities um, uh, with exterior stakeholders who have been identified following an open call that has been disseminated during the first semester of this year. I hope the open call has reached you. Uh, if not, maybe there are co cooperation prospects with the partners in other frames as well. So. Do contact the partners if you want to learn more about the project and the developments on in the target regions. Explore the website as well for the tools. And for now, let's proceed to our first speaker. I'll just load the presentation.
Okay, perfect. Just need now the presentation to load. Okay, so from the European Commission, Director General for Mobility and Transport, Mr. Antonio Tricas will be focusing on promoting sustainable mobility and natural gas and biomethane as fuel for transport. Mr. Tricas, you have the floor. You can unmute your microphone and you can proceed to your presentation. Many thanks. Uh, my name is Antonio Tricas. As Philip said, I am working in the Commission. I am working in the of in the last 10 years. In the past also, Responsible for the project by scale, the biogas mass project. This project will be by the region of Brazil, but also other cities, Sweden, Italy, also several areas of Europe. My presentation, my, my presentation concerns of the natural gas and biomethane in transport and how the European Union is promoting uh, its fuels. As you well know, uh, transport is very uh, it still depends on our production. But uh, uh, natural gas reserves are estimated to be less than lasting longer than oil. And the expected price of natural gas will be significantly lower than oil since we remain in the region addition of will increase the Mr. Chukas, just one second, sorry to interrupt you. As any successful webinar, we're facing a bit of technical problems. We'll just try to optimize your microphone. Just one second. Uh, it's okay. It's okay now. I can, I can, can I continue? Or? Okay, uh, sorry, by inconvenience, I start again. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, uh, okay. Um, the, the, key, the, the first point is, uh, as you well know, the a big dependence on oil. Uh, that is about 94%. Uh, but it's expected that, um, but that the natural gas reserves uh, is going to be last uh, longer than oil. That means that the price of natural gas um, uh, will be significantly lower than oil price in the mid and long term, with a lower impact on the EU economy. In addition, uh, the use of biomethane uh, will increase the EU security, uh, the EU energy security supply. Uh, as you also know, transport represents uh, almost a quarter of the greenhouse emission, but, but there are two sectors in which I would like to, to, I would like to highlight because it's the sector or, um, in part, uh, the, the, the sector uh, dealing with emission from heavy duty vehicles and um, with natural um, um, waterborne transport where uh, natural gas and biomethane can take a special role. The emission from heavy duty vehicles represent almost 80 per, 18% of the emission from transport 
and the emission from water work transport represent 30% of the transport emission. The reduction of the oil dependence is essential for security supply, but also for achieving the 2030 energy and climate policy objective. As you know, this objective was adopted by the European Council in 2014, and there are an overall reduction of 40% uh, of the greenhouse emission, a share of renewable energy in the EU of at least 27%, and indicative target of increasing energy efficiency by at least uh, uh, 20%, 27% uh, by 2030. My presentation today, uh, first, I would like to highlight what, what can be the role of natural gas and biomethane to achieve this objective by 2030, and which are the main drivers that the Commission has put in place in order to promote natural gas and, bio, and biomethane. I'm going to, to, to present uh, the Commission proposal on the promotion of the use of renewable or, or, or the use of energy from renewable sources. Uh, the directive on alternative infrastructure and the outcomes of the national policy frameworks for CNG and LNG in road and waterborne transport, with the role of natural gas and biomethane in the low emission mobility strategy, uh, with the role of natural gas and biomethane in the, in the uh, strategic transport research and innovation agenda, and finally, um, the clean mobility packages adopted on 8 November, uh, the financial instruments in order to support natural gas, but also biomethane, and conclusions. Regarding the advantages of the natural gas uh, are clear. You know that for industry, the uh, use of natural gas reduced 23% the emissions compared with petrol and 7% compared to diesel. If we speak on cars, uh, if we, we speak on heavy duty vehicles, the advantages are um, more or less 60% for, for CNG and 50% for LNG. But it's not only the reduction of greenhouse emissions that is important, um, it's also very important, in particular in cities, the reduction of pollutant emissions. Uh, biogas, methane, emit uh, up to 95% uh, less particular matter and 70% less than the limits imposed by the European Emission Standard Euro 6 for heavy duty vehicles and Euro 6 for light duty vehicles. These advantages are higher uh, in the shipping sector. Uh, the reduction on CO2 is almost 20%, including uh, potential methane slips, and this, this emission are significantly higher for you know, sulfur emission, almost 100%, particular matter 95%, and NOx emission 85%. However, if we, uh, however, if natural gas is blended with biomethane, these advantages are significantly higher. You know that the emission from biomethane can be negative, and according to the study carried out by Young Ben Center, NAMIC study, this emission from biomethane can vary from minus 158 to 99 grams. For that, it's important that the use of, of biomethane blended with, with methane. In fact, biomethane and natural gas are the same molecular. The only difference is the source. If we need to make natural gas a, a fuel for future, if we, we need, we need to go, we need to, 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 to use natural gas um, as fuel for the future in order to achieve the objective, it's important to, to blend as much as possible with biomethane. Also, one uh, is, uh, is a renewable fuel, of course, but also it's much fuel. And also it's a dropping fuel. We can blend uh, natural gas with, uh, with methane at any rate. Also, oh, the logistics for natural gas as biomethane are mature. Uh, can, be, can be distributed through the existing natural gas pipeline, but also it can be distributed uh, LNG in LNG ships or energy on LNG trucks. Uh, this option can be used with the filling station are far of the, of the LNG terminals. Uh, 
Also, uh, we have advanced a lot in the last years in the standardization process and, uh, and the standard for the injection of, of, of biomethane in the natural gas grid has been, has been adopted and also the standard for the use of natural gas and biomethane in transport. Uh, I would like to say that this standard uh, was a recommendation of the Biogas Mass Project, but has taken a long time um, uh, in order that has been finally agreed by all stakeholders. Um, also, uh, in Europe, there are more or less uh, 360 biomethane upgrading plants. That means that the technology is there. The, we need to go to large scale uh, biomethane plants in order to decrease cost. But um, biomethane upgrading is used uh, currently in 11 member states. Also, uh, bio bio vehicles are fueled with biomethane in 12 member states. That means, uh, I, I, that means I would like to highlight, to clarify, um, that biomethane is there, is a material fuel, in addition, is a renewable fuel. The, the main driver from the energy side is the proposal of directive or proposal of, re, of revision of the energy or the energy or the directive on on energy renewable 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 sources. Um, this proposal is now under discussion in the European Council, but the, the proposal for coming from the Commission obliges to the Member States to include a minimum size of energy in the total amount of, of transport fuels that they supply for consumption or use on the market. Uh, this minimum set is, is going to be increased in a gradual way. Uh, the European Commission proposed to start in 1.5% in 2021 and to increase uh, this target to um, 60.8%. Per, 60 the, the energies or the renewable uh, sources or the, new, uh, the renewable fuels include uh, bio, uh, include uh, as far biofuels, but also include biomethane and also uh, renewable electricity. Also, it's important in order to promote biomethane that uh, in this target there is a, uh, there, there are a sub target and 3.6 about about 6.85% should be advanced biofuels and biomethane. That means that the from the energy side for this directive is a clear promotion of biomethane, biomethane but also advanced biofuels. Okay, other points uh, is establish a cap of 1.7% for biofuel produced from organic waste and residues. Um, uh, that are included in the annual 9 of this directive, Part B. Also, uh, you know well, uh, propose a cap of 3.8 for biofuels uh, um, whose origin is uh, from food, from is for, for, for food-based biofuels. However, uh, the directive does not prevent and uh, the production of uh, biofuels from, for, from, first, uh, from first generation with low ILUC impact. And finally, uh, uh, the directive also gives some preferential rules for the use of advanced biofuels in aviation. Does not apply to biomethane. The main drivers for biomethane is the obligation and also the, the, the target of 3.6 as uh, biofuels and biomethane in, uh, included in the ANIAS 9 of the directive. Other driver, uh, this is from the transport sector, is the directive on alternative fuel infrastructure. You know that the directive obliges to the member states to establish uh, an appropriate uh, number of points for CNG filling station in urban areas by 2020. Uh, also, is an appropriate number of CNG uh, along the 20 corner wall by 2025. Regarding LNG, uh, for maritime ports, infrastructure uh, should be built by the N25 and also for heavy duty vehicles uh, in, the, in the same date. date. However, uh, for LNG and inland ports, 
uh, this, uh, this line has been extended by the, uh, until the, the end 2013. Also, the directive obliges to member states to submit to the, to the Commission on, on their national policy framework. In this national policy framework, should indicate how 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 is how they intend uh, to accomplish uh, the obligation coming from the infrastructure coming from the directive, and what is the goals and objective in terms of infrastructure for alternative fuels. We receive. We receive uh, this uh, national policy framework, or uh, the obligation was to submit this, this national policy framework was by, by November 2016. And during this year, uh, the Commission has evaluated uh, this national policy framework. And also, uh, 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 also uh, has made an appropriate evaluation. This evaluation is part of the Clean Mobility Package, and you can find this information in our web with all proposals uh, included in the in the Clean Mobility Package. In this uh, in this um, in this uh, in the in the web, you can find a detail. Um, uh, assessment of the all national policy framework, but also a summary. We have um, we have prepared some fish by member states in which you can find uh, the, the information on how each member state plan to build up infrastructure in order to accomplish uh, the requirements of the directive. In terms of CNG. Uh, we have seen in this evaluation that uh, there is a significant divergence across member states. Uh, there are member states that they, are, um, are they, they intend to promote uh, alternative fuels, uh, CNG as alternative fuels, in particular um, Belgium, uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, and Italy. However, um, a significant number of member states um, does not provide estimates how the market of CNG vehicles is going to be developed in the future. Other um, no good news is that members, other, uh, other not good news is uh, member states with a high number of CNG refueling points. Uh, in comparison to the CNG vehicles, like, like the case of Germany, uh, has not expressed the intention to, to build up new alternative fuel infrastructure. Uh, the national policy framework also, also, also um, uh, inform us that the future sales uh, vary, varies between 0.4 percent and 3.7% in 2020. It's clear that there's significant divergence in the, in, in the development of the market of CNG cars and vehicles in the, across the member states. In the, in the picture, you can, you can see this information. We can see that the, only the, the member state where significant developments for CNG is Italy, um, lower developments in Ireland, Spain, uh, Poland, and Finland. Also, we have evaluated the sufficiency of the infrastructure according to the existing fleet of CNG vehicles. Uh, we can see that, um, that uh, in Italy, is, 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 is under red color. That means that the market of vehicles is going to be developed very fast and the number of infrastructure is not enough. In other countries, uh, like Spain, um, Finland, for example, or Ireland, and uh, the infrastructure is, is, is sufficient. However, um, the number of vehicles, obviously, is, is lower uh, that, um, that estimation that we consider for the uh, appropriate market of CNG vehicles. Uh, regarding for LNG, uh, uh, 19 member states uh, has uh, plans to, to build up LNG infrastructure across the 10 network. 
Uh, however, uh, only six or these national only six member states uh, provide estimates on the number of LNG heavy duty vehicles uh, that exist in the in, in the fleet uh, by 2020. Uh, that represent that uh, in certain areas of the TNT corridor or, or where we exist um, areas in which LNG uh, infrastructure is not to be implemented. This is, uh, this, is, uh, is, this is clear that the Commission need to take action and it's one of the issues of the action plan adopted in in November in, in, on 8 November 2017, in order how the Commission could support or to, could help to member states to to cover uh, the existing gaps. You can see in the map is clear and that. Uh, um, okay, you can see the where is the main gaps. Uh, for example, in the in the border in, in between Spain and Portugal, also uh, in the Italy and the border with Austria, there are significant areas that uh, it necessary uh, the build up of uh, more LNG fuel stations in order to ensure you you way mobility between. Uh, across Europe with LNG trucks. The situation also is not very optimist uh, concerning uh, LNG in waterboard transport. Uh, there are countries or member states with uh, significant ambition, like this is the case of Finland, uh, Hungary and also Italy. However, other member states, um, they are not all real plans and has not informed or the or the they have um, some ports so for which it's not clear is the intent to build up infrastructure. Uh, also, um, the lack of, of infrastructure is also important uh, in the inland 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 waterways uh, transport. Yeah, uh, we, uh, it's clear that the the estimate or the or the infrastructure announced in the national policy framework is not uh, is not uh, sufficient to enable the circulation of LNG inland waterway vessels. Only uh, as Italy provides uh, clear estimates for LNG vessels. And you can see the the situation of, um, for uh, for maritime and for inland 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 waterways. Uh, for maritimes, the situation can be uh, appropriated or sufficient in Spain, in France, in Finland, also in Poland. Um, for inland water inland waterways, uh, only is seen a certain sufficiency of infrastructure in France, Italy. Um, San, and Rom I think it's Romania, Romania, but, um, but it's, 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 it's I, I repeat for inland waterways, um, the, the infrastructure announced in the national policy framework is not sufficient to ensure UI mobility with uh, inland vessels across the European Union. We're working also, um, and for that I am responsible, for or for a standard, um, uh, it's clear that uh, we need to create infrastructure with common standard in order to create economy of scale. In uh, the directive, also obliges to member states to build to build up in this infrastructure with common standard. We are working in, with the European uh, Normalization Co Standardization Committee (CEN) in order to develop this standard. Uh, the first successful has been uh, the achievement of a standard for the for the for the use of natural gas and biomethane in transport and for the injection in the natural gas network. Also, uh, a standard for LNG bunkering is already adopted in 2017. Um, for for CNG and LNG for road transport, the situation is also very optimist. Uh, the standard for LNG connector was adopted in 2017. Uh, CEN is working uh, in the transposition of the ISO standard for LNG uh, refueling points 
and this standard should be uh, an European standard in early 2018. On 16 November, on uh, Thursday, there is a big meeting on, with the same representative. I'm going to attend to this meeting um, in order to, to analyze the, the state of the place of the work. But I can announce that it's very, very, very well advanced. The relevant ballot will be likely published in December. And that means by March 2018, and the standard for LNG refueling points should be adopted at European level. Also, the same situation is for the standard for CNG refueling points, and, and also, oh, finally, uh, the standard for CNG connector, connector has also been adopted in 2017. That means that in the future, in the very, in the, in the very, in the very short future, or, um, all, all, stand, all, all uh, CNG and LNG refueling points uh, should be built in Europe with a common standard. That means that we create a condition for economy scale and also for the achievement of the internal market in this sector. Um, other other uh, policy uh, uh, legislative instrument to uh, are the first one is the low emission mobility strategy, which was adopted in 2016. The most important for natural gas and biomethane is that uh, according to this strategy. Uh, that intends to promote uh, low emission energy in transport, intends also to promote uh, energy efficiency in the transport sector, and also moving to, towards zero emission vehicles, in particular in cities. But I say the most important is uh, define in which sector or uh, is prioritary to use the different uh, alternative fuels or the, the different low emission energies. For, it's clear that for, for car passengers, we have different alternatives. And one of the best options, obviously, is electromobility. However, uh, there are sectors like the heavy duty vehicles and the water water transport in which there are not any option. And the most appropriate option should be the use of natural gas and, and, and biomethane. Uh, does not prevent the use of biomethane in other sectors. However, uh, uh, we need to prioritize uh, the use in those sectors for which there are not alternative. And it's clear that in the midterms, uh, the best option for heavy duty vehicles and for water water transport should be uh, natural gas, but obviously natural gas blended with biomethane in order to increase the sustainability of biomethane. It's important also the strategic transport research and innovation agenda. This, uh, this uh, legislative paper or, or legislative act was adopted on May uh, 2016 and defined the guidelines or for the research, uh, for research and innovation in the transport sector. It's clear that uh, we to and, and this uh, and this uh, and this uh, legislative act uh, or legislative communication um, recommend that the that the, the focus should be in the development of new and highly efficient low polluting combustion engines that include hybrid technologies. This is the priority. Up to now, um, the, the natural gas uh, cars uh, use or, or pe um, petrol in, or internal combustion engines devoted to, to, to petrol cars with, with a small, uh, with, with, mo with a small or modifications. And also for LNG in transport for heavy duty vehicles use uh, diesel engines. We need to go to a new generation of engines, specifically devoted to the use of natural gas and biomethane. Also, oh, it's clear that the uh, future or, or is addressed to hybrid technologies. And we need to combine internal combustion engines with electric engines in order to, to, to achieve the higher uh, environmental uh, performance.
also the the research on the vehicles vessels uh, should be accompanied by the research on the energy side the energy the, the priorities or the uh, the research on the energy side is coming from the strategic uh, energy technology plan name it set plan it's important that I repeat uh, to advance uh, to promote uh, new projects with, in order to, to go to large, large scale upgrading plan, but also it's important and to reduce costs. It's clear that one of the barriers for biomethane is the higher cost of, uh, in relation with natural gas. Finally, uh, you know that the, the Commission adopted on 8 November uh, the key mobility package. In this case, uh, the, it's a revision of the CO2 regulation. Of the CO2 regulation. In, this, uh, in this proposal, uh, the Commission proposed to reduce by 2030 uh, the emission from, from the EU fleet of cars and vans um, by 30%, lower than 2021. And uh, this, uh, I, I, I would like to say that uh, this um, legislation, legislation is based on tank to wheel. And that means that uh, for natural gas and for biomethane, um, the big advantage uh, is in the part well to tank and not in the tank to wheel. This is, um, but I repeat, this emission can be reduced by 20, by 30%, but that means emission from the tank to wheel part, okay? And also the propose that this reduction can, uh, should be by uh, should, should be 50 percent in 2021. Other element to to promote uh, uh, to promote uh, natural gas and biomethane is the action plan. Um, uh, also, uh, that is included in the clean mobility package. I present before that um, some national policy frameworks are not enough ambitious. Um, the action plans um, propose to increase the level of ambition of the national plans. Also propose uh, to increase the investment and to define the financial instruments to support member states uh, is to build up uh, the infrastructure for for the three fuels existing the directive and uh, natural gas, um, biomethane, uh, electricity, and hydrogen, and also it's important to improve uh, consumer acceptance. We are working in a proposition on fuel price comparison. It's also my responsibility in this uh, proposal uh, that is going to be adopted. I hope in early 2018 uh, we are going to, to to establish a system of comparison between the price of the different fuels you know, in, in a common unit uh, we can see for example that uh, natural gas is significantly cheaper than than petrol and, and diesel and the price in euros per 100 kilometer is almost similar to the electric cars that means that um, it's a way uh, to promote uh, natural gas and biomethane because consumers, uh, through panels to be displayed in filling stations, uh, could, could, could know, could, could acknowledge that um, natural gas is, uh, is um, not only more performance, uh, more environmentally performance than diesel and petrol, but also significantly cheaper. And finally, other other legislative uh, piece to promote uh, to promote um, that can 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 serve to promote um, uh, natural gas and biomethane is uh, the amending of the Clean Vehicle Directive. This directive was adopted in 2009, and now the Commission proposed an amending. I'm going to summarize, but the most important issue is is um, is the directive established a minimum target for the share of heavy duty vehicles in public procurements and it's clear indicated that um, this share should be achieved through electricity, hydrogen, but also through natural gas and biomethane. This is important because at the moment that, that uh, the public authorities the, uh, uh, 
ik weet een paar liep ook urmen, is is geleerd dat een minimum zet kan be kan be kan be can be achieved through this uh, this fuels and in this case a natural gas and biomethane can take advantage. Other issue is the establish a minimum target target for light duty vehicles. In this case uh, it's more difficult obviously for, for natural gas and biomethane to achieve the 25 grams of CO2 per, per kilometer because I repeat this is uh, tank to wheel and no well to wheel. However uh, the use of biomethane for example with uh, in hybrid vehicles with analytic vehicles could be uh, could be achieved uh, uh, this target and also to take advantage of the in the public procurements. Um, for funding, uh, the most important use for you is the blending map. This blending map call uh, has two steps. Uh, one step is concluded in February, but now it's open the second step. Uh, the deadline is uh, 12 April uh, 2018. Uh, is uh, all, is uh, one billion you know, funding is available, and um, um, one of the sector for the, of this call is innovation. In innovation is included a project on natural gas and biomethane. I think it's a good opportunity uh, for apply, for applying to this call in order to 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 have a financial mechanism for your projects. Also, um, uh, the cohesion fund and the regional funds also is supporting infrastructure investment uh, for natural gas, also biomethane, uh, in particular in the rail and road sector, and also the uh, like the action the, the biogas action uh, action program uh, is uh, is the the horizon 2020 uh, work program. Now the commission is going to start. To, to publish proposals uh, for the work program 2018-2020. I repeat, from the transport sector, the focus should be in the creation of new generation of natural gas vehicles and also electric vehicles, more efficient, but uh, focus on natural gas, a new generation of natural gas um, and biomethane engines uh, vehicles more efficient, and also for the for the energy part, the focus should be in to build up um, um, uh, large scale plans for 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 biomethane and also to reduce the cost. As conclusion from my presentation, I think it's important. First, um, the methane emissions on, from the whole natural gas supply should be minimized. You know, you know that uh, methane emissions uh, account 25 more of CO2 emission. It's clear that, that for natural gas has um, a role in the future. Uh, this emission need to be well monitored by industry. Also, need to be minimized. Also, I say there are two sectors for which uh, natural gas and biomethane can play a significant role. But the problem is, is a problem of lack of infrastructure, but also a problem of trucks and vessels. For that, it's needed that new manufacturers enter in the market in order to, to create the market conditions for or, or to put in the market new models of LNG trucks and vessels. They, now, for example, for LNG trucks, only three OEM are, are manufacturing in, in trucks. is uh, Volvo, that's start now in December, uh, Iveco and Scania. It's not enough to create um, a real, uh, it's, not, it's not enough to um, to guarantee or to, or to supply uh, the demand existing from different operator fleets. Also, it's important, I say, that uh, natural gas uh, has a role for the future, but, uh, but this role is, is, uh, will, be, will be important if a strong introduction of biomethane. Our policy is, is, uh, is um, to, to, inc to increase the share of biomethane, to, to biomethane 
or in natural gas. There are two reasons I, I explained before. One is security supply. It's clear that um, biomethane is a domestic, a, a domestic fuel, can be produced from, from, from European um, producer, uh, uh, use, um, you know, use um, European sources. Uh, we don't need to import biomethane from third countries. It's important for a security supply, but obviously, as, uh, as the Young Research Center uh, um, indicate, biomethane uh, is is most is significantly uh, more performance uh, in terms of CO2 reduction. Uh, in certain cases, uh, this reduction is negative. Also, it's important uh, reduction of cost. One of the barriers of biomethane is that biomethane is more expensive than natural gas. In this case, uh, the Commission is going to cooperate through projects, uh, how it's possible to, to reduce this kind of cost in order to be also competitive biomethane in relation with natural gas. And finally, as I said before, there are different instruments uh, in order to, to promote natural gas and biomethane. And it's important that uh, you apply to, to this project in order to, to make um, biomethane uh, um, the fuel for the future, in particular for the, for, 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 for trucks, for vessels, but also for passenger cars. Okay, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation, for the information and the updates. Are there any questions at this okay. point? Uh, in the second, don't hesitate. Uh, the, pr the PDF presentation of Mr. Uh, Trikas uh, will also be made available for you, so you may... Uh, uh, yes, so the, the focus is the is infrastructure for 20 corridors, but uh, in, the, in the innovation part, uh, infrastructure is uh, for infrastructure uh, for alternative fuels is included, and also in certain case, um, uh, fleets can be also funded. But the focus, I repeat, is in the TNT corridor, but also cover the, the nodes, uh, so the, the urban nodes. So that means, uh, obviously, the focus is on the TNT corridor, including the urban nodes. Sorry, could you repeat? Uh, I... Uh, uh, I think, uh, obviously, uh, I'm not an expert on incentive and fiscality, but obviously, the, I think um, European non-countries, uh, European Union non-countries, so to be clear, can, can participate in projects in certain conditions, but for that it's difficult for me to, to, to uh, explain. But I know, for example, the EFTA countries uh, can participate, but there are special conditions, and I'm not in, in position now to, to give an explanation. But uh, you need to, to read the, the call for proposals. In the call for proposal, is well indicated uh, what countries can participate. But I, I think not sure, or I am totally sure that EFTA countries uh, can also participate. But you need to check the condition established in the call for proposals.
Yes. Yes, I think it's important that you check also, as Philip say, uh, association countries, there is a big list, uh, um, but it's better, uh, okay, you go to the corporate proposal and you read what member states or countries are eligible. And I think it's, um, no, it's not a real barrier, it's something, it's something common that uh, association countries, staff countries participate in European projects. But I'm not a real expert on that and uh, I, I, I don't take a real position. Have a look at that as well. Yes. Okay, if we don't have any other immediate questions, well, I invite you to direct them later through email to, to Mr. Tekas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tekas, for your presentation. Uh, I invite you to remain with us until the end of the webinar. And now we can proceed to the first presentation on actions and developments on the ground at local and regional level. Um, from Auvergne Rhône Alpes Energie Environnement. Uh, Valérie Boroni, you can activate your microphone and start sharing your webcam with us, and I'll be loading your final presentation, your presentation, up. the most updated you have sent us. We can hear you, see you. Can you hear me? Is it okay for you? And we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's wait one second for the for your presentation to load. Well, and following your presentation, we will move to Southeast Sweden. The presentation of Anna Johansson. So. Perfect. Um, yes, uh, I will speak about uh, the bio. And, uh, NGV development in our country, in France. Uh, but just before, I will speak about uh, our uh, regional energy agency. Is uh, now the new name is Auvergne Rhône Alpes Energy Agency Environnement. Um, this is the regional energy agency. Well, it is an association with uh, different members, like uh, local authorities, like. Uh, uh, companies from the energy sector, and uh, we are working in uh, in the field of um, renewable energy uh, sources, uh, sustainable buildings, mobility, circular economy, etc. And uh, concerning the biogas sector, we are working on this thematic uh, from many years, and uh, we were supported by a lot of years by the regional uh, council. Uh, the National uh, Energy Agency, uh, ADEM, and uh, f f with, um, with the support of the Commission, uh, we think uh, a European uh, project uh, from the beginning of the, the years uh, to, to 2000. So, biogas in our region uh, is uh, very important uh, because uh, we can work on uh, uh, renewable energy production, mobility, uh, positive territory, secure economy, uh, and uh, implement new uh, possibilities for uh, new facilities for uh, develop economic development. So, we are proposing to the sector in our region uh, technical expertise. Uh, we are a sort of a res a resource center. Uh, we, we are working on the field of uh, innovation, uh, mainly with the biogas action project. And we have uh, some tasks concerning observation and measurement of the performance of uh, the territories. So, 
concerning the the content of my uh, presentation, I will speak about uh, French framework and uh, I will focus on the strategies on project for local uh, authorities and for farmers. Sorry, my phone. Well, that, that doesn't run. Uh, so, uh, the French framework for biomethane. J just before to speak bi about biomethane, I just want to give you some data concerning um, CNG, CNCG development in our uh, country. Uh, we are not, um, the, we have not, the sector is not very well developed in our country because we have just only uh, more or less 1,000 uh, lorries uh, using uh, natural gas uh, as fuel, 2,300 buses and uh, more or less uh, 10,000 uh, vehicles uh, like cars. Uh, so, uh, concerning our country is very well, is not very well developed, and we have around f uh, 50 uh, public uh, refueling station for gas, natural gas. Uh, concerning biomethane, um, uh, the, the biomethane development uh, is uh, allowed by uh, new uh, law. Uh, from 2011, and uh, the 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 France uh, create um, a new mechanism of support uh, with a feed-in tariff. Um, for biomethane, the feed-in tariff is covering uh, the biomethane production and the gas grid injection into the gas grid network. So the cost uh, and the tariff is uh, uh, de is depending of the type of the project. You can have um, a project in farms. You can have a project in, uh, um, for instance, uh, water treatment plants. Uh, uh, well, in landfill too. So the the level of the fill-in tariff will depend of the size of the plant and uh, with the type of the project. So you have to different between six, uh, 64 euros by megawatt hour, uh, and uh, you can uh, you can rise uh, for the fill-in tariff uh, one 1,025 euros by megawatt hours. Uh, megawatt hour injected into the gas grid. Uh, if you know the cost of the natural gas uh, for the moment, it's around 20 euros uh, by megawatt hours. So the the cost production for biomethane is quite uh, high. And as said, Mr. Um, I don't remember his name of the commission. Yes, we have to reduce the, the cost of production of biomethane. The mechanism is uh, created guarantee of origin. That's uh, um, I will explain quickly the, the mechanism. Well, when you are a producer, um, uh, like a farmer, you can inject megawatt hours into the gas grid, but uh, the, the, your biomethane uh, will be um, buy by a gas supplier. And for each megawatt hour you, you will inject, the gas supplier will create one guarantee of origin. So uh, after just after the gas supplier can sell the gas, the, the biomethane, he will sell uh, one megawatt hour of natural gas plus uh, one guarantee of origin. Uh, so if he can, he can sell uh, CNG2, one mega of CNG, CNG plus one guarantee of origin. So in our country, uh, the is it possible? We have a market of guarantee of origin, a uh, small market uh, regarding the, the price of the biomethane. 
but when the gas supplier will provide to a final customer um, a megawatt hour of bimethane, he will say the price of the natural gas and the price of the guarantee of origin. And uh, in our country, um, when you sell one guarantee of origin, uh, for instance, uh, 10 euro, one guarantee of, uh, of origin, uh, a part of this uh, amount, uh, the part of the, this money, has to go to the a national fund uh, in order to finance the feed-in tariff. Uh, it's around 70% of this amount. So you have to give set seven euros uh, to, uh, to the national fund. But if you sell the methane and the guarantee of, of origin in to, um, as a fuel, as a fuel uh, for CNG, for, in, for instance, you don't have to finance the national fund, so you receive one uh, hundred percent of this uh, amount. So for gas supplier, it's quite interesting to sell the bimethane to uh, transport uh, facilities. Uh, so in our country today, uh, we have forty plants injecting. Uh, by methane into the ga ga gas grid, uh, national gas grid. 70% uh, of these plants are, for, uh, are owned by farmers. And uh, we are injecting more or less uh, 600 gigawatt hour by year. 600 gigawatt hour is representing the consumption, the needs for uh, 2,400 uh, uh, buses. So today we are in capacity to refuel all the buses running to gas natural uh, with na na natural gas in France. The uh, the number of uh, biogas plants and uh, gas grid injection plants are increasing. Uh, uh, for the next, will will increase for the next year. So uh, we will uh, we will be in capacity to produce and to uh, refuel and to uh, inject more bimethane into the gas grid. This is the only one mechanism of support for bimethane in our country. So if you are producing bimethane. Uh, uh, in your plant, but you, you, you are not injected into the gas grid, so you don't have any feed-in tariff, you don't, you don't have any guarantee of uh, origin. Okay, uh, the next one. What are the main strategies and the main projects in local authorities? I would like to uh, make the difference between urban areas and rural areas. And for urban areas, the main drivers are um, reduction of CO2 emissions and uh, all the document planification around uh, uh, renewable energy sources production, reduction of CO2 emissions. Well, I think this, this is the main, one of the main drivers. Our driver and the political driver for me is circular economy. For elected people, it is easy to um, understand and to uh, support the possibility for local authorities to produce bimethane and to reuse this bimethane for uh, local transport, uh, for uh, uh, transport in, in their, their area. So it is very, very easy to, uh, to, to have a support for elected, from elected people in this, in this field. One of the main driver and the main, uh, f for the, uh, from the customer sales si uh, side, uh, is the air quality, uh, for instance, in Paris, for instance, in Lyon. Uh, and the impact into the public transport and the impact for the operator of public transport 
today the ERTP is the, uh, the entity in charge of public transport on, in Paris, for instance, are, uh, are decided, uh, I, the strategy is on GNC, GNV, GNC development and use of, of gas, natural gas for their transport. And this is the same for logistics, because when you say, you, you can hear the, the, law, the mayor of Paris said, in few, in few years, it will be not possible to enter into the capital of France uh, with uh, lorries uh, using diesel, for instance. Uh, the, the professional of the logistics has to find a new and other solutions, and we know for the moment, that electricity uh, engine are not uh, pos uh, are not possible uh, because the power of this kind of engine are not enough, uh, um, not sufficient for to to um, to um, uh, to allow um, logistics into the center of cities. So air quality is. Uh, is a clearly a driver for logisticians and public transport. And the last point uh, important uh, that for urban areas, especially of metropole, there are new competencies of energy. So there are uh, there we have a decentralization of the manag uh, management of energy in our country, and local authorities, especially the metropole, are in charge of. Uh, uh, the management of their energy, so they will, uh, they can develop specific policy on natural gas development for transport. In the, this uh, uh, urban areas, uh, we can find a project, by gas project, and the main development, especially in our region, the main development are the the water treatment plant, uh, so the production of biogas from water treatment plant and uh, cleaning systems and uh, biomethane production and gas grid injection, because we are we have gas grids uh, in urban areas, so it's it's quite easy to connect uh, the biomethane production to the gas grid injection to the gas grid, sorry, and. Um, the the policy uh, is clearly uh, we would like to produce uh, biomethane for our public transport so we can uh, with the waste we can use uh, we can produce uh, a fuel and for so, so some of them for the territory and especially the companies and especially uh, logistician so um, and uh, and the development for the development of public and private uh, refueling stations. Um, but the problem uh, is, and we are working on this problem with the biogas action project, is public procurement, because uh, we can produce locally uh, by methane. But the link, the link between the local production and the local uh, cost, uh, cons, uh, um, use of uh, the biomethane is not very, very well uh, identified, uh, especially if uh, you, you are, uh, as producer, uh, a local authority and, uh, and, and the other side, as customer, uh, a local authority too. So we are working on a guideline uh, within the Biogas Action Project in order to help local authorities to be sure that their local production can be there uh, used in the, their territory. It's not easy, but we, we 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 think we can reach the possibility to 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 have some uh, uh, case to to develop the, the, these possibilities. Uh, concerning um, rural areas, um, the main drivers, we, we have same drivers, for, for instance, but um, so reduction of CO2 emissions, but the main one is uh, 
re renewable energy sources production, local production, and the possibility with this lo those local productions uh, to to manage local resources and to um, to develop uh, economic development in rural areas uh, because uh, you can develop employment, you can develop uh, um, uh, rich, richness uh, in rural territories. And uh, just a focus on Alpine areas, we have big problems in our uh, uh, valley uh, of air quality. And uh, we are developing, uh, especially for lorries and public transport, the use of uh, gas uh, as fuel in order to reduce uh, the particular matter's emissions. So the uh, regional council in our, con in our region is developing a call for tenders to, to uh, to develop um, refueling stations and uh, like the, the possibilities for lo local companies to uh, to buy uh, uh, gas natural uh, natural gas uh, lorries. But we have local authorities in these uh, uh, rural uh, areas, and um, uh, one of the main driver is. For, for, of course, but the, the local authority is not for the moment. It depends on the territories, but uh, uh, the the farm, uh, the farm, the farmers uh, who who are developing uh, project biogas project in their territory. But uh, for the local authorities, uh, the they are working on uh, biogas plant, water treatment plant, on water treatment plant, and uh, you know the size of the water treatment plant is quite uh, lower than in urban area. So we are developing co-digestion using over waste in order to produce more bi biogas and to produce enough bimethane to be injected into the gas grid. I didn't say the technical, um, uh, economical and technical uh, level for gas grid uh, injection into the uh, in, in our country, it's around 40 uh, cubic meter per hour, uh, the, 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 the size of uh, profitability, if, if I can say that. So in this kind of uh, water treatment plant, maybe you can produce 10 normal me cubic meter per hour. Uh, so we have to boost the biogas production in order to pr produce bimethane production. And the, 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 the politic message is to produce for public transport, but but for the territory too, uh, especially uh, companies uh, using lorries. Uh, in special territories, we were uh, in contact with uh, rural areas where you can't find uh, the, the natural gas grid. So you don't have natural gas grid, but they want to develop um, uh, natural gas um, transportation in their territories. So we, we focused on the possibility to deliver the gas by trucks uh, with uh, LGV uh, using guarantee of origin in order to use bimethane and uh, producing, uh, so a refueling station uh, producing uh, uh, natural gas compressed and uh, in order, in waiting for the local production because in our country uh, it depends of the territory, depends of the project, but some project, especially territorial project with farmers and uh, other partners, uh, you, need, you need time to build a project. Maybe four years, uh, uh, sometimes ten years. So uh, we have difference between the possibility to develop the fuel, uh, the gas natural fuel transportation in a territory and the possibility to produce bimethane. 
So we studied this, this opportunity for the moment is not profitable, you know, you can imagine. But maybe in, in, in few years, if, if we, we can reduce the cost, if we can organize the, the delivery uh, of gas, uh, maybe it could be an opportunity for rural areas to develop uh, natural gas uh, transportation uh, in the, in their territory. Concerning the farmers, uh, the drivers are, qu are quite uh, different um, because uh, uh, f f farmers who want to produce uh, bimethane in order to inject into the gas grid, um, the concerning if, if we make a comparison with uh, CHP plant, so uh, electricity production, in our territory, in country, in our country, it's more profitable to produce by methane than to have a CHP plant. Um, uh, uh, regarding the efficiency of uh, the plant and uh, the production of gas, the efficiency is uh, more higher than a CHP plant. And concerning the operation of the plant, it's quite easy for farmers to operate a biomethane plant than a CHP plant. So uh, I can see for farmers, if they can produce biomethane, they, they opt, the, the, the idea is, is to, uh, to, to, to develop projects uh, around gas grid injection. But if you don't have the gas grid, uh, it's not uh, easy to develop uh, gas grid injection. But we have some some example, interesting example in our country. Um, you you can use trucks. You can uh, you can uh, drive the the biomethane by trucks and inject it to the gas uh, into the gas grid uh, in the point of injection. It could be a possibility, especially for territorial projects, to have uh, to raise the public acceptance. Too, we have some problem with public acceptance to build a biogas plant in our territory. And uh, uh, for one of the main driver for farmers is the fuel autonomy. They want to produce their own fuel. And uh, they, they want to be uh, in autonomy for uh, petrol. It's, it's a very, very important driver in, uh, in our territory. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased to show you the first public refueling station uh, owned by farmers in France. Uh, it is uh, linked with the Agribiomethane project uh, in west of parts uh, in west of France. So the, this refueling station uh, is uh, um, it is a second refueling station owned by by um, farmers. The first one was the Calmary Farm in Finland. And uh, it is a new model, and uh, we hope uh, it will be in development uh, uh, for the next uh, year. Another driver, it's called concerning uh, biogas plant uh, with CHP. We have innovation in our region. Uh, we have a company uh, which is proposing a new technologic um, uh, uh, I don't know come on, to, to how to say, but uh, a, a new technology uh, with uh, the main uh, um, aim the the fuel autonomy. So the farmer is in uh, which is which has a CHP plant will be produce his own farm and uh, will um, it is a new refueling station including. Um, the the possibility for this refueling station uh, to uh, up upgrade the biogas. So uh, you are you, you kept you you can uh, uh, kept um, t t up to ten percent of the biogas flow in this CHP plant uh, in this biogas plant uh, in a farm. 
and uh, you can up upgrade these biogas and produce a bimethane and uh, we have a storage, we have um, a compressor and uh, it, uh, it is uh, the possibility for this, uh, the farmer to uh, refuel one truck or one lorry or uh, to 15 cars. So um, we think that the regional agency, uh, we think it is a very interesting um, technology. So we are studying uh, with uh, the company uh, the, the, this, this, the, this kind of market and how to develop this, uh, uh, this technology in uh, by gas, existing biogas plant uh, producing electricity. So we think it could be uh, very interesting, especially in rural or area, to develop small uh, refueling station using uh, bimethane. So we are working on this field, on this uh, market uh, within the biogas action project. Probably we will have the main results uh, by the end of the year of uh, the next, uh, the beginning of the next one. Uh, well, that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. Um, I think it is, uh, well, uh, for, for me, the biomethane development, it is a very, very uh, interesting um, um, sector, especially for rural area, uh, because uh, there is, uh, the main production will be uh, in rural area too. So I, I hope it will be uh, in development in the next years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valérie, for your presentation and focus on bio and GV in, in French regions. We are starting to receiving some uh, some questions mm -hmm. um, from Diego. What, uh, what about your sustainability sustainability certification of your geo? Who controls this and how? The geo has, has been controlled by the the natural grid natural grid operator. Um, and we have a system of um, register. It, uh, we, in, in the, this is uh, uh, GRDF, the main um, DSO uh, of g gas grid. Uh, it is a gas grid operator in charge of the register of uh, this guarantee of origin. But the sustainability about, for instance, um, uh, what we, what we we can put into the digester and uh, what it is allowed to to put into the digester, this is the this is a national regulation and uh, it is at national uh, sorry local level that it it is being controlled by the the administration the local administration. Valérie, can you stay with us 15, 20 minutes, minutes more? Maybe there will be other questions at the end of the webinar so that we can proceed to the next presentation. OK, I try because yeah. I have another presentation at uh, 2 o'clock. I will direct you okay. the, the, the questions by email. Uh, OK, so thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Hanele Johansson from the Regional NGH Agency for Southeast Sweden. Um, Hanele, you may open your microphone and share your webcam with us. Now I'm loading your presentation so that we can start. And we will have a final uh, Q&A session right after these so that we, that we catch up the, the, the delay. Okay. And you may, of course, uh, dear participants, you can may all of you um, ask your questions in the chat box and I'll record and then ask them at the end. Hanele, can you hear us? I think yes. I heard you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you share your webcam as well? Yes, yeah, sorry. Perfect. We can hear you. The presentation is loaded. You may start your presentation. Please. Thank you very much and uh, hello everybody. Uh, I will try to make it short. I don't know if I will succeed, but anyway, I will start with giving you the Swedish context and the Swedish goals and um, how the role of biomethane 
fits into this context. Uh, and uh, finally, I will give you a regional example that will illustrate the challenges that we face and uh, the sex success factors that there are. First, something about the Swedish context, just to put <laughs> the figures in into the right, co uh, right context. Uh, Sweden is quite a big country, if you look at the surface, but uh, a small country compared to many other European uh, countries when it comes to number of inhabitants. We are 10 million people and uh, consequently the density is quite low, 22 inhabitants by, by square meters. Extraction of natural gas and a very small grid on the southwestern part of Sweden. Uh, on the contrary, we have a lot of biomass and hydro energy used mainly for heating and electricity. And we have, for some years ago, already more than 50% of renewable energy in Sweden. Since March 2016, we have a new tougher goals for emissions in Sweden. Uh, we want want to have a, a no net a no, no net emissions uh, 2045, which means that the emissions from Swedish sources, including the transport sector, shall be close to zero. And to succeed with these goals, uh, we uh, need to have a fossil fuel independent transport sector in 2030, which means that we have to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions with 70% compared to 2010. Uh, the situation today is that the transport sector in Sweden stands for one quarter of the energy consumption that is 87 terawatt hours in domestic transport. And, but it also stands for one third of the CO2 emissions. Uh, the amount of renewable energy used in transport sector uh, is today 23.7% according to the method used in the European Union. This is by far the biggest problem we have in the transport sector and all renewable fuels are needed if we wish to reach our goals. So how are we going to do it? There are three main things that have to be done. We have to plan our society in a way uh, that the transport system becomes more efficient and uh, less transports are needed. And we have to make the transport more energy efficient and this is concerns vehicles, the way we drive them, but also speed uh, that we use. So the speed limits have been tougher during the late, uh, latest years and we have to use more renewable energy. And this is how the Swedish Transport Administration sees the way forward. And uh, it shows the share of fossil fuels in road transport with and without measures. And the measures, the A measures and the B measures uh, the aim is just being tougher. And these are the three ways, just developing our societies is the blue one, and the energy efficiency, the red one, uh, and the orange is energy efficiency through ele using electricity, and the yellow ones when we swift to electricity and the green ones 
biofuels and the grey ones are the remaining fossil energy and um, as you can see uh, bioenergy is quite important uh, to use um, until 2030 anyway then electricity becomes stronger and the potential that we think there will be for biogas or biomethane it's 15 terawatt hours by we can produce 15 terawatt hours by 2030 and um, just some words um, about how this work is carried out we have different organizations and networks for doing this work uh, the one is uh, called for self-free Sweden and uh, the target with this organization is that, that Sweden shall be one of the first for self-free welfare countries in the world and it started it was started by the Swedish government in connection to the climate meeting in Paris in 2015 and by now there are 200 actors that have joined this movement and the other one is the 2030 secretariat with focus on transport sector and it has been working since 2013 uh, what is interesting is that they have introduced 30 indicators that illustrate the development towards this target so it's then for its activity area uh, development of society energy efficiency and renewable uh, fuels and then there are of course many national organizations such as Swedish Gas Association and many regional networks for example uh, Biogas Southeast or Biogas Lust the one that uh, I am project manager for and uh, that is also part of the biogas action project and today the production of bio, biogas is 2 terawatt hours not much compared with the target uh, and we have um, 279 biogas plants and the more than 64 percent of the production is upgraded to bio CNG and used in uh, vehicles so this is the main use of biogas in Sweden and most of it is or, or not most of it but all <laughs> almost half of it is produced in co-digestion plants uh, they are usually bigger and they use a mix of different substrate which gives a better yield and they also increase more than other types of biogas plants uh, natural gas was introduced in Swedish transport sector in uh, the middle of 1980s and it started with buses and uh, most of it or all of it was in the beginning natural gas but uh, the share of bi biomethane has increased all the time in 2007 they were as big both, both natural gas and biomethane and in 2008 biomethane had a bigger share in the bio CNG uh, and if you look at it today the share of biomethane in bio CNG is 83 percent uh, it's really spectacular and the target is 100 percent of course uh, also the number of public refueling stations stations is increasing all the time we have 170 bio CNG stations in Sweden or actually 
Well, they are both natural gas and, and uh, biomethane, even if the share of biomethane is very high now. Uh, and we have even six LNG, L, L, LBG stations today in Sweden. The number of vehicles is increasing all the time, but from very low levels. We have today, uh, sorry, <laughs> we have about 55,000 GNVs in Sweden, and we have 4.7 million cars. So it's not much more than one person, and the same applies for electric vehicles. This is the big problem today, to get the vehicles on the market. So, why do we want to produce biomethane and use it in transport? Well, it's locally produced and a clean vehicle fuel, and it is made of waste. So instead of burning our household waste, we reuse it. And when we produce it from manure, we get two products. We get biogas or biomethane, but also a biological fertilizer that is returned to the soil. That is, the manure that is put in the digester comes out as biological fertilizer and is returned to the soil. It's really a very good example of circular economy. And it also reduces, when produced from manure, it reduces the emissions twice. First from the heaps of manure and secondly from traffic. And by producing biogas from manure, we reduce the over-fertilization of the Baltic Sea. Uh, because our, well, I come from the southeast Sweden and it's uh, close to the sea. So this is one of the important uh, things. And it is also crucial for our farmers if they wish to increase their production. And I um, wish to give you a regional example or a local example from the Kalmar County. Uh, Kalmar County represents 2.4% of the population in Sweden, but it stands for 25% of the production of poultry, 12% of the production of milk, and many other products from uh, farms. So the biomethane bio production is very important. Uh, if they don't find a way how to treat manure, the farmers cannot expand their uh, production. And uh, this year, uh, we have new biomethane buses running in, in the county. Uh, we made a, a public procurement that resulted in 60% uh, biomethane, or 50, 50 57 gigawatt hours. Uh, it has inspired many farmers to start companies. So the, the names marked in blue colors, they are new companies who have uh, made, uh, built by farmers for the production of biomethane. And um, they have made feasibility studies uh, and asked for environmental permits and for support. And in many times, they have also been granted supports for building a biomethane plant. So the problem today is to find customers to all this, all this biomethane. And 117 gigawatt hours is a lot or 11.7 million cubic meters. So what we have done now is we have made a pre-study to see if liquefied biomethane could be a possibility. 
and the pre-study showed that there is indeed a market for LBM that is possible to be produced in our re region. Uh, at least if we look at the prices, because we have found that under current circumstances, that even includes support, we can produce liquefied biomethane in Menstros. It's marked well. It's on the coast, and you can see all arrows going from there. And um, well, it can be produced for a price that is competitive with diesel for heavy transports, road transport. But there are still quite many obstacles. The heavy vehicles running on liquid natural gas or liquid biomethane at the, and that are now coming to the market from both Scania and Volvo are producing them are much more expensive than diesel vehicles. The price that I have heard is 140,000 euros for a LNG vehicle compared with 100,000 for a diesel vehicle. So it's quite a big price difference. Another very big potential is in maritime transport, since many shipping companies are building, L uh, buying LNG ferries. But the price difference between LBM and LNG is huge. Since LNG for maritime transport is exempted from taxes. But for the market to boost the price of liquid biomethane has to be equal to liquid natural gas. Otherwise, well, then all there has to be um, legislation that says that they have to blend it. Otherwise, they will they they will not buy it if they don't have to do it. It's too expensive. Even if there are many uh, transport companies that find it interesting, nobody actually says that they don't want to have biomethane. So the problem is is not there, but it's just that they have to. They have to be profitable. They are private companies. Uh, and uh, another problem for both liquid and compressed biomethane is that in the in incentives are different in different countries, which means that some of them, some of the countries receive support twice when they when they sell their biomethane us in Sweden. Uh, in some cases they have production support in their own country and then they get uh, support for consumption in Sweden. And when this happens, and it already does, we cannot compete with them. Uh, yet another obstacle is that our financial initiatives are on short term. Uh, we know that the biomethane is exempted for energy and CO2 taxes until 2020, but we don't know what happens after it. And the biomethane plants cost tens of millions of euros to build. And the banks want to have contracts, long-term contracts with customers. And we don't know what is happening after three years. So. This is a very serious obstacle. Uh, however, we have success factors also, of course. We have succeeded in building this market, even if it isn't yet very big. And one of the main success factors have been the public procurements, in particular of buses, but also the cooperation between private and public actors. Uh, and, of course, the exemptions from energy and CO2 taxes. And the tough climate targets on national, regional and local level. And often regions and municipalities put even higher climate targets than what our government and parliament has put. And of course, also a common vision and target of fossil free transport sector in 2030. 
is very important. So, this was about all. Yeah, and you are welcome to ask me some questions if you if you wish. Thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation and for the lovely concluding image as well. Um, <laughs> I invite all the remaining speakers to share their webcams with us um, and we'll... Nope, nope. And we'll be... they will all be taking the final um, questions now so be sure to write them in the, in the chat box. There is a first question for you, Hanele. Uh, what's limiting if you say so the question was asked by Urs Bayer. What's limiting if you say that farmers cannot expand their production without manure treatment? Okay. Nutrients will stay more or less the same with or without AG plus biomethane emissions. Sorry, what was the last? So you can see it in the chat box. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, yeah, well, we in in our region, we have a surplus of phosphorus. We cannot spread all of it on our farmlands. So if they want to buy more cattle, they have to buy more land. So the big question today is the separation of the manure in a fast fraction and a liquid fraction. At the same time, we know that there is too little phosphorus in the world, so this should be <laughs> it should be an obligation to to uh, to distribute it to the places where it's where it doesn't is where there is not enough of it. Uh, so this is a very very important question, and we are working with it, but it's not an easy solution. It's not easy to find a solution for it. I hope okay. that was Any other the answer. Any other questions for our speakers? Any comments from the speakers, maybe, regarding other presentations, the presentations of your fellow speakers? No, I, only I would like to say the, the example of Sweden is a good example for the, for the European Union, how, or how we can introduce biomethane. Yeah, it's clear that um, natural gas uh, can have a role important for the for the carbonization of transport, but the use of, bio, of biomethane, yeah, as is, is done in Sweden, is the good right, is the appropriate right, in the appropriate way. Thank you. Okay, well, this concludes our webinar. Uh, the speakers uh, will remain available for questions by email, so uh, I'm referring now to the participants here. Thank you. Um, so the recording will be available of these last presentations, the, the PDF slides as well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, to the speakers for their uh, presentations and thank you uh, for the to have stayed uh, as long as they, they eat. Now you can go to your lunch break. <laughs> Thank you to all. Thank you. And we will send you an email with all the presentations and contacts of the speakers, okay? So that uh, more communication can follow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.